and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and I am on location this week. I'm at the She Podcasts Live Conference. If you are watching this as we are live on Facebook, you can see my beautiful hotel room. This is really some special 70s uh, decor. I will put a photo of this in the Facebook group when we go live as a podcast later this week. My goodness, so you can see this special room. But the news doesn't wait. So these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. And as always, I'm going to link up my sources in the Facebook comments where we are live and in the show notes at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast so you can read more whenever you want on your own schedule. In the News is brought to you by Real Good Foods. Find their breakfast line and all their great products in your local grocery store, Target, or Costco. Our top story, there's a lot of buzz around adjunct therapy for diabetes, basically another treatment along with insulin. Earlier this year, a drug so far just named TTP399 got FDA breakthrough therapy approval. A new study shows it works well to keep people with type 1 out of DKA. This was a small study, 23 people, but they found that TTP399 can help lower blood glucose without increasing the risk of DKA. It's important because other adjunct therapies such as SGLT2 inhibitors do help lower blood glucose, but the FDA has said they cause too much of a risk of DKA in people with type 1. Those are brand names like Invokana and Jardiance. Pivotal trials of TTP399 begin later this year. New partnership announced today, Dexcom and Garmin. You will still need your phone. I know you were going to ask. But with the new Dexcom Connect IQ apps, you can now see your Dexcom G6 info on your compatible Garmin smartwatch or cycling computer. Jake Leach, chief technology officer at Dexcom, says Garmin is the first partner to connect through the real-time API, which we told you about a few months back. Basically, you're going to start seeing more connectivity with different items like this, different products, without having to use a third-party community-sourced workaround, which a lot of people already do right now. The name here is interesting, right? Connect IQ, very similar to Tandem's Control IQ. But since Dexcom owns a bit of Tandem, maybe that's no coincidence. I've requested an interview with Dexcom. Maybe we'll find out. New study about time in range, hybrid closed loops, and faster insulins. The headline here is that using FIASP with the Medtronic 670G system resulted in greater time in range. How much? The FIASP group spent 82.3% time in range. The Novolog group spent 79.6% time in range. This was over 17 weeks. The participants mostly bolused at mealtimes, not before. So no pre-bolusing, which was interesting. The researchers echo what I was going to say here. Quote, while the primary outcome demonstrated statistical significance, the clinical impact may be small, given an overall difference in time of range of 1.9%. So just a heads up, if you see headlines screaming about how much faster FIASP is because of this study. This one is interesting. People who have tried a psychedelic drug at least once in their lifetime have lower odds of heart disease and diabetes. This is a University of Oxford study published in Scientific Reports. These researchers examined data for more than 375,000 Americans who had taken part in an annual survey sponsored by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Participants reported whether they had ever used the classic psychedelic substances, including LSD, mescaline, peyote, or psilocybin. They also reported whether they had been diagnosed with heart disease or diabetes in the past year. The researchers found the prevalence of both conditions was lower among psychedelic drug users. While no one is recommending you start taking mushrooms to avoid diabetes, there is a growing push to start serious research to investigate any link between psychedelics and cardio metabolic health. Got an update on the once a week basal insulin I've been reporting on for a while. Both Lilly and Novo Nordisk are testing their own version of this. The most recent study looks at the Lilly version called terzepatide, These researchers found it to be safe and effective with lower rates of hypoglycemia and slightly lower A1Cs than daily basils like Lantus or Traceba. A lot of studies ongoing here for both brands of potential once-a-week dosing, including a large phase 2 program that includes people with type 1. More to come, including how rugby and diabetes education may go together. But first, I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors who helps make Diabetes Connections possible. And that is Real Good Foods, where the mission is be real good. They make nutritious foods, grain-free, high in protein, never added sugar, and from real ingredients. We like their breakfast line a lot. Although, Benny, my son, rarely eats the waffles or breakfast sandwiches for breakfast. It's usually after school or 
late at night. Do your teens eat breakfast? Let me know how you do that. You can buy real good foods online or find a store near you with their locator right on the website. I'll put a link in the Facebook comments and as always at diabetes-connections.com. And back to the news now, getting out of the doctor's office and into something that people can actually relate to, Diabetes Australia is using rugby to teach men about the risk of type 2 diabetes. League Fans in Training or League Fit is based on a Scottish initiative that used football teams to deliver exercise and nutritional advice to overweight and obese men. The program includes education and goal setting and a rugby league based exercise session delivered by coaches and some of the club players. What I really like about this is that from what I can tell, they're focusing on small changes. I'm not telling these guys to give up everything they like to eat and drink or that they have to become professional players to get a little bit more fit. Imagine if NFL players had a clinic for fans to come and learn a little bit about fitness and nutrition. Again, not to be pros, just to live a little better and lower the risks of type 2. All right, on Diabetes Connections, this week on our interview episode, we're talking to a mom with type 1 who has had two children during the pandemic. That's right, one last summer and the other in 2020, summer of 2020, and the other just a few days before our interview in the fall here of 2021. She had two little kids, and she's written an adorable children's book about type 1. And that is it for In the News this week. A little bit off kilter in these new surroundings. But if you like the show, please share it. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.